today what God has spoken to my heart. Let's go into the word of God, please. The word that I heard so strongly in my spirit, I don't know why it came into my spirit. I didn't even know that I could be, I could, I could put that into a preaching kind of a title. But, you know, it was so distinct. And the word that God put on my heart is a word that God speaks from the fire. God speaks from the fire. That's the word that God put on my heart. Let's receive it from the Lord. You know, I believe bondages will be broken today. Let's get ready. I want to give you, as I always do, I don't just get you know, emotional about what God speaks. I want to ground it in, on God's word. So let me go to God's word and give you enough reasons to, to make you understand that this is the common pattern in God's word. Let's turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 4. And let's look at some of the passages. I'm going to read three or four passages for you to get it. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let's read verse number 3 first. Sorry, 4, verse number 12. Deuteronomy 3, I'm um, sorry, 4, 12. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no, saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. Can we read verse number 33, please? Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Verse number 36. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire. From heaven the words originated. But on the earth he showed thee his great fire. And thou heard his words out of the midst of the fire. Chapter 5 and verse number 24. There are many more passages. And he said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. Somebody say, fire. So every time God spoke, he spoke from the midst of the fire. So I was wondering as to why. Why should God surround himself with fire for him to speak? You know there are two very clear incidents in the Bible where God spoke out of the fire. The first one being what would we all know as the burning bush. When God appeared in the midst of the fiery burning bush. And spoke to a man by the name Moses. You know the story how that day and that event changed the life of Moses for all of eternity, if you will. That one incident out of the fire changed a man's life forever. And if you look at the very existence of the nation of Israel, Israel was made a nation. There were a people, but they were made a nation. On the, on the foot of the mound called Sinai. That's where God gave them their national laws. That's where God gave them his governmental approval for this nation if you will. That's the place where God encountered them and said I have chosen you as a holy nation. I think all the foundational and moral laws ex to the existence of this nation was given on that day. Even that day, it was out of the fire he spoke. Amen. So what am I trying to say? Two events that almost turned history once for all. For both Moses and for the nation of Israel. Happened when God spoke out of the fire. Let me start by saying, God's voice can change situations. Amen. Can I get an agreement here? But I said to God, God, why did you choose the fire? Why couldn't you come and speak directly to your people? Why surround yourself in a way as if, as if you're insulating yourself? As if you're trying to protect yourself 
with this fire around you. Even in heaven is surrounded by seraphims. Do you know that? And seraphim simply means fiery creatures. That means wherever God is, there is fire around him. Why is that? I want you to know this people of God. Today I want to speak something very important. You know the Lord told me very very strongly. I'm making my people fire. And out of my people will I speak. Out of my people will I speak to the nations. Speak to people. Speak to families. Speak to your neighbors. Speak to your children. But God only does it after he makes you a fire. Hallelujah to Lamb of God. How many of you understand this today? And how many of you want to say, God, before I leave this place, let there be a fire anointing upon my life so that you can use me to speak through me to other people around me. God will make you a fire. Why is it so important, people of God? I'll tell you why. Because the law that God gave to Moses or through Moses to Israel, he said it very clearly. If there is any object, this is how he said, it was absolutely, you know, capturing every object. He said, if there's any object that can go through fire in your midst or in the temple, it has to be refined through fire. So the most important thing, God is looking to lit somebody with fire in order to refine them. I said, God, why? He said, he cannot speak as long as there is flesh. It's only when the flesh is consumed that he is going to speak. And that's the reason if you look at the man by the name Isaiah. Who became the greatest and the most prolific prophet of the Old Testament. Especially when it comes to Jesus' life and the end times. It was this great prophet Isaiah. The day that God chose him to minister to the nations. There was an, a fire, bre, fire brand that touched his tongue so that God could make him clean. God wants to remove everything that is blocking. And God removed the dross from his tongue, the uncleanness from his tongue, so that his tongue can become the speaking tool and speaking instrument of heaven. Let me tell you something. You need a fire refining for God to speak to this nation through you and to people around you. Can I get a me in the house of the Lord? Come on, get ready. I want to become the voice of God. I want to become the voice of God to this end generation, to this land called Canada. But I know there are still things in me that need to be refined. And so let's welcome the fire of the Holy Spirit in order to refine us so that God can speak from the midst of the fire to the people that have been running away from him. Can I get a shout of amen in the house? I'll give you two passages. You know the story of Isaac itself is so, so explanatory. You, God cannot give you prophetic words and God cannot speak through your tongue until your tongue is refined with the fire of God. I'll give you two passages. Please listen closely. You know, in Zechariah 13 and verse number 9, Zechariah 13, the end of Israel is recorded here. Zechariah 39. I will bring the third part through the fire and I will refine them as silver and I will try them as gold is tried and then they shall call on my name. God says, I am going to refine Israel through the fire. Before Israel will become the voice of God to the nations. 
which will happen i want to declare the voice of god is not coming from mecca or from india it's coming from jerusalem to the ends of the earth and let me tell you before god can make israel as his voice to the nations he is going to refine israel I know how many of you understand what I'm trying to say. Israel has got a destiny that it will become the voice of God because the Bible says from all nations people will go to Jerusalem and say please teach us the laws and the precepts of God. They will come from the east and the west to hear Israel bring out the message of God. But before that happens God says I will refine them. Let me tell you church get ready God wants the church to become the voice for Canada and for this west and for the nations around us but before he does that he is going to cleanse his people he is going to refine them by fire These are messages that don't excite many people but I'm going to preach anyways Hallelujah And then God says in Malachi chapter 3 verse number 11 please I'm so 3 verse 3 Malachi 3 3 and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi Let me tell you God's refining through fire is not happening in the world it's happening among the Levites Let me tell you the pastors needs a refining the preachers need a refining come on the singers need a refining the worshipers need a refining if you have to become the voice of god god has to refine you oh look it's very very quiet out here can i get a witness somewhere here before you become the voice of god god is going to refine the levites how many of you levites are here today how many of you worshipers are here today how many of you chosen seed of god are here today get ready god wants to refine you why does the the goldsmith would ref, def, refine the gold to remove all impurities let me tell you when the fire would come fire is never superficial fire goes deep fire will burn everything and the bible says when elijah set the altar the fire came and licked or even the water that is around the altar everything was sucked up by the fire consumed by the fire because there will be no impurities left church it's time that we pray because i believe many of you listening to me today are going to become the voice of god directionless mosses in the land directionless people in this land are going to be gripped by the power of god and the lives are going to change because you are going to become the voice of god to those people can i get an amen in the house of the lord hey there are many people in this land with destiny but today they are walking around like headless chicken sorry for the language but that's true directionless there's no direction anymore but let me tell you the church and the people of god when they get engulfed with the fire of god god will speak to them amen how many of you want the fire of god to fall upon you amen now listen carefully when the fire comes you need to pray god everything that is inside of me that is all the flesh let it be burned amen come on let my if the selfishness in me burn it away if there's mediocrity in me burn it away if there's pride in me burn it away if there's selfish sensual desires in me burn it away if there's bitterness in me burn it away if there's unforgiveness in me burn it away how many of you want the fire of the holy ghost to burn your life so that your life will become the voice of god if you believe that put your hands together give a lord a praise in the house of the lord god wants some voices some people will become his voice in this end times I asked the lord isn't it possible for you to use me even in the flesh the lord told me why my voice is sacred my voice is pure and jesus you know amply you know accentuated this truth 
when he said in Matthew, I'm sorry, in John chapter 6, verse number 63, look, look at those words. John 6, 63, he said, the flesh profiteth nothing. There's nothing that'll come out of the flesh. But it's a spirit. And look then he says, the words that I speak are spirit and they're life. When you are engulfed by the fire of God, it's not flesh coming out of you. Your words will become the words of life. Somebody who knows what I'm saying. Come on, hallelujah. Your words will bring life to others. Your words will bring quickening to others. Even the dead people will come back to life because there is power in your word. Can I get a shout of amen in the house of the Lord? God says flesh will profit nothing. Excuse me. Please don't get me wrong. I know eloquent preachers. I know preachers that wax eloquent. I know preachers who are comedians. I know preachers who can bring, you know, the scripture so beautifully and with some kind of an, what do you call, in a, about some beautiful language and homiletic perfection and all that. But let me tell you, God doesn't care. Because if it is from the flesh, nobody's going to get saved. I don't want to be known more as an eloquent preacher but I want to be known as a preacher who has fire inside of him and his words is bringing fire can somebody shout hallelujah we want to see people who will speak and nations will be touched Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, somebody, lift up your voice this afternoon. God wants to make your voice a voice that will bring healing, bring miracles, change lives, transform people, bring back the backslidden. Come on, hallelujah. If you want that to happen, can you shout a hallelujah in the house? But he said, first I have to refine you. I have to get some things out of you. Next time when you open your mouth, it's not pride coming out. It is not selfishness coming out. It is not, you know, a sense of, you know, arrogance coming out of you. When you open your mouth, the Spirit of God. how many of you are understanding what I'm trying to say because the Lord is telling me to tell you that's going to be some of your lives in the days to come when you open your mouth it's not the dirt of flesh coming out but the power and the beauty of the Holy Ghost coming out of your mouth can somebody shout hallelujah I'm talking about fire refined people will carry the voice of God but I asked the Lord can you bear with me for the next two minutes because it might get a little tough and, and uncomfortable. I asked the Lord, God, how are you going to refine me or refine any of us? The Lord told me, you know what? You know, don't ever think, you know, in the moment God sends you to the fire, you're going to get some, some kind of a sickness upon you. No, 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 that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm going to say this. He will make things uncomfortable. He'll put you in situations that you'll have to rely on him. He will make you go through some situations where, you know, all that you have is Christ. Amen. The flesh will be crushed. Amen. The flesh will be broken. Amen. But I heard the Lord tell me some of you are going through some situations where God has sent you through some fire. But the Lord told me to tell you two things today. Number one, in the midst of this fire, you need to know this. You will not be consumed. Amen. The fire will not consume you. The fire will not destroy you. The fire will not make you non-existent. The fire will make you glorious for the kingdom of God. If you believe that, can you shout a glorious hallelujah in the house of the Lord? You will become a voice of heaven in this dark age, says the spirit of the Lord. You know what it means? It won't consume you. It means simply this. That after the fire is over, you are still there. 
That's the difference between the fire of the devil and the fire of God. Because the fire of God is not there to reduce you, but to bring you out more glorious. Come on, you will shine more glorious. You will be witness more glorious. You will preach more glorious. You will prophesy more glorious. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? This fire will not destroy you. And the Lord told me to tell you this morning, tell my people, even the promises will remain. The blessings of God upon their lives will remain. That's a fire. And let me tell you, anytime the fire of God comes upon you, people are not going to say, look how terrible his God is. Look how, I mean, how miserable his faith is. They are going to say, look, God, he is God. He is God. Let me tell you, your life will become an object of glory. Can somebody put your hands together? Give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. Your life will become a testimony. Your family will become a testimony. If you believe this promise, can you make it known in the house of a Lord? God will make your life a glorious Come on Anytime the fire from God came People said God He is God They fell down on their face And worshipped the God of Israel The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob Let me tell you people of God This fire is only for the glory of God So can I say one more word Some of you are going to receive it Because I heard thunder Alongside that word, the Lord told me, tell everyone that went through fire. The fire that refined them. In the next few days, if I have to speak to Moses, if I have to speak to the north, if I have to speak to the nation, I'm going to use your life. And I will speak from the midst of the fire. If you believe that, can you receive it with that Come on, if you believe that, can you make it known in the house of the Lord? You, your life will become the voice of God. Your life will become the platform for God to... You know, the testimony of this church... Many of us have gone through fire. But I can say joyfully today, from the midst of this fire, God will speak. Amen. Those of you with no, even an iota of doubt creeping inside of you, if you really believe that for the fire that you went through, it is not a waste. You are going to become the voice of God. Voice of miracle. Voice of salvation. Voice of healing. If you believe that, can you make it known in the house of the Lord? With a great praise in the house of the Lord. For every pain that you went through, God is going to speak through you to others. He is going to become the voice of God to the people around you. Give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. You will become the voice of God to people around you. Hey, hallelujah Can you say in the days to come When you open your mouth It's not flesh coming out It is not maybe some motivational speech Coming out of you The words that are coming out of you You will be shocked yourself Because the words that are coming out of your mouth Is transforming people He's healing cancer. He's delivering the captives. If you believe it's a prophetic word for you, can you receive it with some kind of a faith rising up inside of you? You will become the voice of God because God will speak only out of the fire. And I heard the Lord say, this is a, this is a very special prophetic word. If you want to latch on to it, you know, if you really believe God is preparing you for something great, something powerful for his kingdom, would you please, you know, let go of all kinds of, you know, self-imposed in, in, inhibitions, apprehensions, and just release it today in the name of Jesus. Because I'm going to say a word. You know, God wanted to speak to the world. And God looked down. He saw 12 fishermen. 
He saw some poor Gal Galileans. He said, I want to use them to speak to the world. But they are crude. They, they have got so much baggages. They have got so much that is unchristlike. There's so much flesh in them. And Jesus looked and John said this. He said, I baptize you in water. But the one who is coming after me, he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire. And on the day of Pentecost, cloven tongues of fire fell upon these Galileans, upon these disciples, and Peter stood up as a voice of God. Come on, hallelujah. How many of you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and in fire? Put your hands together. Give a Lord. There is a... I can sense the anointing in this place right now. Let me tell you, people of God, those of you standing, remain standing because I'm going to pray for you. I can't complete my message. I've just, I've just got started. But, but that, that, that's okay. I want to say this one word that's so important. You know what? The, you know, when we used to talk about water baptism, you know, I, I, I was a student of, 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 of the word. You know, I used to go into Greek word even when I was young. And I told people, you know, baptism comes from the word baptizo or baptis, baptizo, meaning in the Greek. It is not a religious word in the, in the Greek. It was a, a commercial word. Do you know baptism was a commercial word in the Greek? Not a religious word. Baptizo means, you know, the best example is they used to have fabric, clothes. And then they want to change the color of the cloth. And you know what happens? They will take that cloth and dip into a dye. You know what the Greeks said? This cloth is now baptized. You know what it means? Every fiber of that cloth must take the identity of the dye. That is called baptism. That means every, you can't just say one portion, every thread, every fiber must take the identity of the dye into which it's going to be baptized. Let me tell you, people of God, some people say, you know, I got the fire on my hand. I got the fire in my, in my feet. I'm so great, grateful that you have got that. But today I came to make a change. If this baptism is a baptism of fire, every cell in your body must be baptized in fire. Come on. Hallelujah. Your tongue must be on fire. Your hand must be on fire. Your feet must be on fire. Can I get somebody baptized in fire? In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Every. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, hallelujah. God is raising up such a generation in Edmonton who will say, my cells are on fire. My tissues are on fire. Let me tell you, your whole body is going to come under the fire of the Holy Ghost. You will start to speak like the Holy Spirit. You will start to move like the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, you're no more cold, shivering believer. You are a believer on fire. Jesus said, I want, oh, somebody get this prophetic word. I'm going to give you a minute because I sense, I heard in my spirit, the Lord is taking my ministry into a worldwide ministry. I don't know why he said that. I'm not an ambitious man, but I sense with this message, something is going to happen. And this is going to happen to people right now. Get ready. The Lord told me to tell you this afternoon. Let me make this very clear. Peter, the last time he opened his mouth, There was a lot of trouble. The last time he opened his mouth, people went into backsliding because he grabbed, he dragged eight other disciples with him. But this time when he opened his mouth, 3,000. And I asked the Lord, what was the difference? The Lord told me last time, he spoke from his flesh. But this time, my fire. 
is upon him. Come on. There's a difference when the fire is upon you. There's a difference when the Holy Ghost is upon you. Can somebody give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? If you believe you're going to become the voice of God, can you make somebody know about it? Come on. Tell your neighbor. Tell somebody beside you. The Lord is placing his fire upon me so that I will become the voice of God. Get ready, get ready. Come on, tell. If you want to go tell somebody, tell somebody right now. He's going to immerse me. He's going to baptize me in fire. Come on, baptize you in fire. Baptize you. It's not just your tongue. It's not just your feet. It's a complete baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Are you ready to receive this? Receive this as a prophetic word. In the next few days, you will open your mouth to the business community, to the politicians, to the witch doctors, to the Hindus, to the agnostics, to the atheists, to people who don't believe in God, to the oppressed, to the suppressed. To the possessed of the devil. You will open your mouth. And when you open your mouth. Let me make this very clear. People are going to be set free. Because spirit of God. Is going to flow out of your mouth. If you believe that. Can you make an acknowledgement. Get ready. Get ready. He said to me very clearly. I will only speak. From the midst of fire. If there is a fire church in Edmonton, God will speak. If there's a fire believer in Edmonton, God will speak. And I want to be one. I'm tired. I want to be one. I'll become the voice of God fire and the Lord and I don't have I don't have much time but let me say what God told me he told me tell my people when the fire comes upon them no enemy can dare to touch them can I get somebody who believes it God said to Zechariah you know, you cannot build walls around Jerusalem, but I will be a wall of fire around Jerusalem. And the powers of darkness cannot enter when I'm a wall of fire. Can you imagine when there's a wall of fire, Jerusalem is protected. But God says, I'm going to make you a fire. I'm going to make you a fire. Come on, if that's the case, no demonic powers can touch you. No spirit of darkness can touch you. If you believe that, can you make a sound that's going to make hell nervous? You are going to become the walls of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And by nature, fire will spread. This fire that's on you will touch your family. Will spread. Are you ready? Are you ready? Those of you believe, I don't have time, but those of you believe that you need to become a fire for God. Can I read that one passage? And those of you who want to say amen to that, say amen. Psalm 104 verse number 4. That's a word for you. You know what? Look at the word. Psalm 104 verse number 4. Who maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. If you are a minister of the gospel, you are going to be a flaming fire. Come on, hallelujah. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Can we all stand up and give the Lord a shout and a praise offering? Come on, put your hands together. You will become a voice. Hey, come on. Can I say this is one person as I'm representing all of you because we had to go to Lord's table. You know, I'll become a voice. A God will make my life a voice to speak to nations. Because God has put his fire. When people see me, they will not see the flesh. The fire. Glory. 
I wish I could be preaching for the next one hour, but I have to stop here. But at least those of you believe that you need a Holy Ghost fire baptism. There will be nothing cold in you, nothing of the devil in you. Everything is surrounded by the fire of the Holy Ghost. If that's your desire, before we go.